An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, pure time and velvet style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty, which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Richard Hamilton and I were discussing the topic of prophetic lucid dreams just prior to deciding to end the call and each of us winding down to each of our prospective bedtimes. I decided to watch a couple episodes of the TV show Seven Days prior to heading to Sleepland. Seven Days is a show in which NSA agent Frank B. Parker using a device called the Sphere, is able to travel back in time no more than seven days for the purpose of correcting errors that occurred in the previous week. The project is called Backstep. I've been watching these in order, and the show ran three seasons from October 7, 1998 to May 29, 2001. Although a really awesome series, it was cancelled and left at a cliffhanger because it was putting too many ideas in people's heads that our Wall Street overlords don't want the masses having. I'm not saying that the show literally does any sort of whistleblowing in the extreme sense of the idea, but it definitely encourages a mindset of critical thinking, unlike most of the garbage they try to push on TV these days. The next episode I was poised to watch is one called The Backstepper's Apprentice. The storyline goes like this. Parker backsteps to save the life of a priest assassinated by a drug cartel. And while mid-backstep, he cuts through an airliner and momentarily picks up a passenger blown into the sphere. Now they must try to find out the flight before it's too late. The passenger is a kid who, because he was picked up by accident, is able to remember the previous timeline prior to the back step. When the timeline resets, the kid finds himself waking up in bed, and therefore he assumes that he merely had a prophetic dream. He experiences a day of massive deja vu as a result. With an urgent need to use the bathroom, I paused the episode to go do my business. When I got out of the bathroom, I had noticed that I had a package come in the mail for me and had not noticed it prior. It was already strange enough to have previously had a conversation with Richard about prophetic lucid dreaming, to then straight away be watching a TV show episode running along a similar theme. But now, the package that was waiting for me was from my friend Trent who is an Australian guy who lives in Thailand. It was a package I was expecting, and inside of this package contains, yes, you guessed it, lucid dreaming tea. So a conversation about lucid dreaming leads to a TV show in which a kid thinks he was lucid dreaming, followed by my receipt of a package of lucid dreaming tea. Don't worry, it gets even more strange. 
Besides the fact that Jonathan LaPeglia, I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly, who plays Frank B. Parker, despite the seemingly American accent, is actually an Australian. Things get even more strange as I watch the episode of Seven Days titled Deja Vu All Over Again. It is important to note that this episode aired on February 23rd of the year 2000, which is approximately 18 months, give or take, prior to the 9-11-2001 false flag attacks. This was during a time when most people had no clue who Osama bin Laden was, and I need to mention that Osama also goes by the name of Usama as well. People did not know about him or about his dealings in Afghanistan or any of that until after 9-11-2001. So what does this have to do with the price of lucid dreaming tea in Thailand? You're about to find out. Now, I'm not going to tell you what you should or should not think in regards to what you just saw. I'll leave that to you. All I'm going to say is that it was a very strange end to a very strange day. I'll leave it on that note.